everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and today we are celebrating a couple of things. One is the color of the year. The color for this year, the Kona color for this year, is Horizon. And we made this whole quilt out of that Horizon. You can see it comes in lots of different cuts. We've got the yardage, we've got the, we've got the layer cakes, the charm packs, and the roll-ups. And so we've got all kinds of sizes for you to work with. And it's a beautiful color. You know, sometimes we're not like, we're kind of a little bit like, ooh. But this one, we're like, ooh, we love this one. So this is the color of the year. And I happen to really love two color quilts. So this is a really old quilt pattern. And it's called Lady of the Lake. And the earliest information we could find about it is 1810. So this is an old, old pattern. But of course, we've made it new and easy for you. It's all half square triangles, two different sizes. Super easy, let me show you how. So to make this quilt, you're gonna need one packet of 10 inch solid squares of color and one packet of 10 inch solid squares of background. Your border is a five and a half inch border and you're gonna need one and a quarter yards for that. Your backing is four and a half yards of vertical seams or two and a half yards of 108 wide. The machine quilting on this pattern is called curling waves and we just think it fits it beautifully. So let me show you how to make this. And we have a new technique for you today, but right now we're gonna start with our tried and true. And that is this two squares right here. We're gonna take two squares of color, just like this, and we are gonna sew all the way around the outside edge. Now we've done this a ton of times and it makes this center triangle right here, this one's. You're gonna need four of these for one block. And so we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna go ahead and line up our I've already sewn, you can see, we're gonna line up our ruler corner to corner and make two diagonal cuts like this. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna press these open and we are gonna square them to five and a half. And so I'm gonna press two of them open because there's lots of ways to square. You guys, when you're squaring a block, what you wanna do is you wanna find a tool that works for your brain because squaring, it just feels like some really, you know, one of those things that feels hard, but it's really not hard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron two of these open. I'm gonna show you two ways to square a block and both of them work well for my brain. So the first ruler I'm gonna start with is a block lock ruler. It's just a regular square. Any square that has a diagonal line, you can use for this method of squaring. This one has a little shaved edge, so it locks up tight to that seam, which we like. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna put this on here and we're gonna pull it back to five and a half right here. And I, that feels like we're, um, you know, like we're taking off a lot, but sometimes the sacrifice is worth it. So we are gonna cut four of these at five and a half and I'm doing this with the block lock ruler on this set right here. And then these other two, I'm gonna show you how to use the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer. This is the one that I happen to love. And we're gonna lay it on here. Now you can see on my ruler right here that we have, this is the five and a half inch stitch line. So I'm gonna match my stitch line to their stitch line right here. And if I can, I'll scoot this all the way over to the side so I'm only making one cut, just like that. And that is actually how you square that with the Clearly Perfect. I love the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer. I think it, uh, it's quick and easy, makes sense to my brain. So we're gonna go ahead again, you know, line it up with your line, and then I slide it all the way over to one side, hoping I can get one cut. Now, if this didn't line up exactly out here, like if my um, diagonal cut had been off, then I would just put it here, and I would take a little bit off this side like this, and I would come down here and take the rest off of here. You just wanna line your stitch line with their stitch line. All right. So these are gonna be pressed open to the dark side. Whenever you're using a white fabric, you always wanna make sure that you press to the dark side uh, so that that seam is hidden and you don't see it coming through your white fabric. So we need four of these for one block. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the Easy 16, which I have not done before, and, um, but I think you guys are gonna think this is really fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two squares and we're gonna draw a line vertically and horizontally. So we're gonna lay our ruler on here. I'll do this from these two right here. I'll grab two new squares. Let me grab that one. Oh, they wanna stick together badly. 
All right, I'm going to grab two new squares. We're going to lay them on top of each other just like this. And we are going to draw a line vertically and horizontally. Vertically and horizontally. Just like this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around the outside, even though, you know, we've already, we've already got those lines drawn inside first, so all the way around the outside. So I'm going to just put my presser foot on here, and I'm going to sew all the way around the outside, just like this. Now you've seen me do this a hundred times, sew all the way around the outside. But now what we're also going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to sew on both sides of this line and both sides of this line. And I have one here that's already done. So you can see right here I've sewn, I've drawn my line and sewn on both sides of this one and both sides of this one. So the easiest way to cut the Easy 16 is to first cut on your um, drawn lines. So we're going to do that right now. So we're going to cut on these lines like this. And then you can take each little section and we're going to cut each little section twice, just like this. So line it up corner to corner, just like this. And if you put your, um, if you put your square so that it's pretty much facing you, you know, even with you, uh, you'll be able to do it without rotating it. So we're just going to cut it corner to corner on both sides and we'll get four from each one of these squares, which means we're going to get 16, which is like super good news for people who love half square triangles like I do. Makes, um, makes lots all at once. Let me scoot this down so I don't cut into those other little triangles over there. There we go. And again, one last one, and this makes it really easy because you've just cut them in half and you're cutting four sets of four from those, our little corners. There we are. Now these are going to be squared to three inches. And so we're just going to come over here and I'm going to press a couple open. And we're again going to show you how to square. My first square is going to be with the block lock. And... What I remember, how I remember the block lock, how this works for me, is that I always press to the dark side. And so then when I put my ruler down, I remember that this writing where it says block lock, it goes on my background fabric, on my light fabric. Now see, you lose very little on this one. And so we're just, we're just going to do that. And this one right here, again, I'm just going to lay mine on here. Now I'm going to slide this down so that the three inch line is right on the outside edge. And that means I just have this little bit to square. Now, if for some reason my block were kind of wonky on this side, you could square a little bit from each side doing the same thing. All right, so once we get all those squared and together, we are ready to put together our block. So let me show you how to make this block. This is the block we're talking about right here. And it is a, just a great, easy block. But for those of us who have a little bit of an angly challenged brain, I have to say I, I got to be good friends with my seam ripper a few times on this. But uh, once you get the hang of what's happening, you're, you're good to go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a five and a half inch half square triangle in the center. All of our little squares are sewn together going the same direction. And it's like a little mantra. You know how I tell you I have mantras all the time. You know, upper left, upper left, upper left. And so we're going to sew the sides first, which is two of those right here. And you're just going to make sure, just like that, they go together. And these over here are going to go just like this. And we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew those together. So I'm going to sew these two. And literally, you'll, there'll be a diagram in the pattern. And you will just want to, you will become good friends with that diagram. Because you'll just want to check it every time because it's just has to be just a certain way to make this work. So these two, I now know. And, and by the way, when I sew, I always, once I finish a block, 
that block stays right there so I can make them all look like that one. Hopefully it's right, right? Or otherwise I'm doing it wrong all the day long. All right, so then I'm gonna sew this to the edge of this block. And so we're gonna sew the sides on first and I'm gonna line those up. There's nothing to match on this part. No seams to line up. Then we're gonna sew our other pieces on and I'm gonna fold these over and put them here like this. All right, then we're gonna add these to the other side. So just like this, let me make sure. Nope, just like this, whew. We almost did that one wrong. So on this part, it's color to color and white to white. So that will help you remember that. All right, now I'm gonna press this nice and just go ahead and press it nice and flat from the top. Flip it over, make sure your seams are going the way you want them to. And generally that's the way they want to in my book. They lay nicer if you just let them do what they want to do. All right, so once you get your block pressed nice and flat, we're gonna take it back over here and we're gonna use this block underneath to line it up and make sure we get it just perfect. So our top row, I've sewn four together and that's gonna go right here all the color points to the upper left. On our bottom row, it's gonna be the same. They're gonna all point to the upper left, but we're gonna put them in. And, and when you sew them together, you can sew two, 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 then four, 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 and make sure they're all going the same direction. All right, so let me sew this row together, and then we'll add our top and bottom rows. Okay, so I've lined this up here. You can see how easy it would be to get this, you know, turned just a little bit. All right, there we go. I think that is just right. We're gonna put that on here like this, and we're gonna sew that down. Now this right here, you wanna make sure that these first two seams line up. You have a little, a little seam right there, and that's, you know, that's one of those places, those anchoring places where you make sure you keep things lined up nice and straight. So a few anchoring stitches, and then I'm going to go in here and come across. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my next anchoring spot ready, which is clear on the other side of the block, over here on this side. Lay this center seam down and come across. Line up that corner. And then we are going to add that top row here. And it's just gonna go on here like this. So then, coming across here again, I'm making sure that my side seams match up exactly, and I'm nesting them. So one seam goes one way, one seam goes the other. So our actual stitch line lines up exactly right in the middle. All right, so let's see how we did. That looks pretty good. Let me press this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this together in quadrants. And the way I remember this, I have some blocks made over here, so let me clean up a little bit. We'll put these right down here. All right, so how we put these together was I paid attention to this blue half square triangle right here, this side, and all my blues went into the center like this. And so as we put them in, the, all the blues came into the center like this. And that's how we got our, four, our big quadrant for our quilt. So once you have all your blues pointing toward the center, you are ready to sew your quadrant together. So we're gonna go over the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these top two. And now you're gonna nest your seams at every little seam. Make sure one's going one way and one is going the other. And that will keep your block nice and square. and I just stop and line up each junction before I get to it. And then I'm gonna do the same with this. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. I'm not taking this off or cutting it because it will act, kind of act as a pin for me as I put the next one together because it'll be attached by some thread. 
and then we're going to go ahead and nest our seam as we go along. And so now my thread is actually holding these two together. I'm going to be able to open it up and just fold them right in half and so right down the side and that will make our big quadrant. All right, now let's press this open and I'll show you how it works in the quilt. One of my favorite things about two color quilts is that, well, first of all, they're beautiful. I love them. There are huge collections of just red and white quilts. There are huge collections of blue and white quilts. But I also think it's, a, it's an awesome way to make a quilt for, you know, if you have a college kid and they have school colors, this is a great way to make a quilt. This quilt also looks like you worked super, super hard, doesn't it? It looks like you made pineapple blocks or something, and yet all it is is these half square triangles that just fit together so nicely. All right, so let me show you how this fits in the quilt. Okay, so we have three, and you can see it goes right here. So this is how it fits right in the quilt. And we have one, two, three across by three down. Now that takes 36 squares, so you have just enough left to make a pillow for your bed, just like this. So I really enjoyed making this quilt, and I love when we can bring an old classic and make it new again. And now you know a whole new technique, the Easy 16, and we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Lady of the Lake from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.